What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So a few weeks ago I made a video about the 427 single overhead cam camera and its history. And in that video I made reference to the fact that it proved the way for the modular engines of today starting with the two valve, three valve, four valve, and even the Coyote. But there is one engine in the family that kind of gets left out and it is the most truest form back to the 427 single overhead cam engine and that's the 6.2 liter single overhead cam engine so today we're going to dive into that engine and let you be the judge of whether or not this qualifies as a modern day version of the camera so let's get started on this video by the 2005 model year the mustang had a complete departure from the new edge body style from 99 to 04 and the two valve engine it was replaced with this new body style called S197 and it came equipped with a 3 valve 4.6 liter engine. Little did we know as Ford enthusiasts that we were going to get a glimpse of what might have become one of the greatest Mustang engines of all time, but it never happened. So that's where the story is going from this point. In 2007, Muscle Mustangs and Fast Fords did an article on this particular car. Don Bowles Cold Digger 6. This car was built in conjunction with Roush Performance and the factory Ford engineers. But what was really appealing about it was what was underneath the hood. It was a mystery engine that no one had ever seen before, and it was going to lay the basis for the 6.2 liter engine down the road. This mystery engine was dubbed as Project 777, which stands for 7 liters. 7,000 RPMs making 700 horsepower, but the actual output of this engine was closer to 800 horsepower. This engine, not by coincidence, displaced the magic 427 cubic inches just like the camera did back in 1964. The bore stroke combination used to come up with the magic 427 cubic inch number came by using a 4125 bore with a four inch stroke and as you can see by the casting in this block it says the boss is back meaning that the Ford engineers had a bigger plan for this engine down the road. Don Bowles ran this combination for a couple years running on E85 and weighing in at 33 to 3500 pounds this car was an eight second performer naturally aspirated. This V8 is our all new 6.2 litre that's uh, just been launched in the Super Duty and now is available in the F-150. It's got a big cast iron block, big heads, best in class, 411 horsepower, 434 foot-pounds at 4500 RPM. The truck equipped with the 6.2 litre will pull a load of 11,300 pounds. Obviously it's got great performance a large bore and a shorter stroke, so that really means we can fill those cylinders effectively and deliver a lot of power each time we fire those twin spark plugs. The 6.2 litre engine is different from the domestic competitive engines out there. It features a single overhead camshaft, gives us a really stiff valve train, and we have dual equal VCT cam timing. Similar to twin independent VCT, it allows us to optimize the torque throughout the speed range and also optimize fuel economy at the same time. As soon as you step on the gas and really demand a quick pull away, it's going to be running up the rev range and it's just going to be eager to work. This engine is going to appeal to somebody who wants a truck that's fully capable to tow and haul and work, deliver day in, day out and be durable. The interesting part about this whole story is the fact that what was an 8 second quarter mile engine was now being installed into F series pickup trucks and the first generation Raptor. This engine would never be destined to go into a Mustang body from the factory, which was a shame because even though that Ford reduced the displacement down from 427 cubic inches to 6.2 liter, which is 379 cubic inches, the architecture of this engine is almost identical between the 427 camera. Looking at the valve arrangements in the head and looking at the Y block bottom end, 
it just shows that this thing has roots back to the original camera. The end of the line for the 6.2 liter single overhead cam engine came in the form of a 7.3 liter pushrod engine from Ford, nicknamed the Godzilla. This engine is truly amazing. If you want to find out more information about this engine, you can go over to Revan Evans YouTube channel and he's done extensive work with Brian Wolf and the power that they are producing with this engine is completely phenomenal. But let's get back to the 6.2. If you want to use a 6.2 in a performance application, there is a ton of performance potential there with the cylinder heads. I've actually flow tested the 6.2 liter cylinder heads on David Vizard's flow bench and completely out of the box stock, they flowed 320 CFM. And after a minor cleanup, we were able to obtain 375 CFM even with using the stock valves. So even though the engine has a ton of potential power-wise, there are some obstacles that you just have to overcome, and that's parts availability. Getting some serious ground camshaft, something that's meant for a race application, is a pretty expensive deal to do. But since we're building a 6.2, we also have a 7.3, so I don't know which one we're going to do. And the reason why we decided to go the 6.2 route initially because it was before the 7.3. And that is to replace the engine in Old Blue, the 96 Mustang GT that I used to have that I sold to my good buddy and friend, Micah Monteleone of Gaston Automotive Services. We're going to replace the two-valve 4.6 liter engine in it that's in it now. But there is some interesting similarities between the 6.2 and the Godzilla. And guess what? It has the same bore spacing. We've actually took a 7.3 liter crankshaft and laid it in the 6.2, pretty much making a factory built stroker. Um, you can purchase the 7.3 liter crankshaft at the Ford dealership and it's fairly reasonable. Um, the only difference is you have to modify the front of the crank so that you can drive the oil pump on the 6.2 because of the unique oil pump drive that the 7.3 has. It's not equipped for it. But nevertheless, let's take a look at what I have here. This is a junk head that I got from Micah. And the reason why we got this was so that we could actually chop it up into sections to see how thick the cast in itself is so that we know how far we can actually push our porting on the 6.2 liter heads. As you can see, the rocker arrangement is very reminiscent of this uh, 427 camera. But there is some things that needs to be addressed. On the original camera, you had an adjustment screw here that adjusts the lash onto the valve tip. This setup being used in uh, production trucks uses a hydraulic lash adjuster here in the end of the rocker. It's a great setup in a stock application, but when you start running really large camshafts, you're going to run into an issue because this thing has a swinging foot. I don't know if you can see that, but that foot actually moves to maintain proper geometry on the valve tip itself. So whether we take and modify these rocker arms to accept a regular adjusting screw like it was found on a traditional camera, I don't know. Or, since we have a 7.3 Godzilla now, we may just go that route. But I can tell you this, you will probably see it here on the channel. And until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later. And yes, someone needs to develop camera valve covers and a timing cover for this engine and it would look the part. See ya.